welcome back to the podcast. Wes Schaefer is here, and Wes is the business fixer. He's at fixerwest.com. Now, Wes sees the message you want to convey, but perhaps you can't find the words, and Wes gives those words to you so you can deliver your powerful message in a powerful manner. Because if you don't toot your own horn, there is no dancing. And Wes has authored two books. He hosts two podcasts, Air Force veteran, father of seven, brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So he's a glutton for punishment, but he takes the lumps so you don't have to. <laughs> we'll get some breakthroughs, some aha, some insights today. Wes, glad to be speaking with you. Thanks for having me, Robert. So we introduced you in your bio a little bit, but in your own words, what gets you, you know, excited, passionate, turned on? What are you up to? Yeah, man. I mean, I love sales. You know, I, I jumped out of the Air Force in 1997 to to go into commission sales, and I've been doing it ever since. You know, started my own thing in 2006, and um, love helping salespeople, entrepreneurs, you know, small business owners, sales leaders um, overcome obstacles. You know, and, and it boils down to understanding people, you know, like seeing that message, understanding that message and, and conveying it in a, in a concise uh, manner that, you know, that compels the, the listener to, to take action. And it's fortunately for me, it, I, I'm pretty good at it, but it's, it's hard for a lot of people to do this. And I imagine it, it takes a while just to get up to speed, to overcome all the stuff, right? You mentioned a, a lot of great things in there about, being concise and being compelling and overcoming the fear and also saying the right things. And so where do people even begin? Like when a typical person comes to you and they say, okay, you know, sales and I don't, there's so much I don't know that I don't know. What should someone even do just to get started with this? Well, we have a misconception of what selling really is. Um, when I, do my training, I'll always ask, you know, hey, th give me some adjectives. If I say salesperson, if I say used car salesman, right? So we think of a sales, like give me some adjectives. I'll ask you, Robert, g give me some adjectives when I say salesperson. Slick, sleazy, slimy. There you go. Uh, oh, where is it? I just cleaned my desk. Oh, no, there it is. Uh, are we, I write this down and the word pushy comes up, right? It's all negative, uh, greedy. And, and so we have that perception of, of being in sales and not a professional salesperson is not that way. Um, but that's, that's what we've been raised to think. And, and people are always like, oh, I'm not a salesperson. I can never sell anything. I'm not greedy. And I just want to help people. That's what great salespeople do. You know, they find a need and they fill it. They find a problem and they solve it. Uh, and okay, they get a commission for doing it. Fine. I mean, you go to the movies, the, the the owner of the theater gets a commission for you buying, you know, $20 popcorn that costs 18 cents. You know, why is it bad that a salesperson is paid for helping you solve a problem? And so when they start to understand, oh, really? That's what sales is? Listening, asking good questions, helping find valuable um, solutions, you know, that have a, a two or 10 or a hundred X ROI by implementing what I recommend. Oh, I can do that. Say, so, well, there you go. You know, so it's, it's making that shift and helping people understand, uh, you know, the, the best salespeople are the best listeners uh, and they really do seek to serve. Wonderful. So some reframing is needed for these people that perhaps are self-sabotaging and not even realizing it with the, the, the weird positioning and the keyword based stuff and just kind of making assumptions based on maybe some bad experiences or some yep. childhood experiences. So we need to get into this business of listening and solving problems and getting people to where they need to go. And so as far as the, the sales training that you like to provide and talk about, are there any specific industries that excite you more than others? Um, no. I mean, I, I like working with humans. You know, I've I've done this a long time and I've worked in, in dozens of maybe a hundred industries. I mean, healthcare and high tech, financial services, mortgages, you know, real estate. I've worked with uh, like elite portrait, uh, you know, photographers, uh, yacht, uh, it's kind of like a, like a net jets, but for yachts, you know, I mean, just 
But at the end of the day, it's again, it's understanding humans. When you understand humans and what makes us tick and pull it out of the owner, like what makes you unique, when I know what makes you unique and I know why, like the value that you bring, you know, I help you craft that message and it works. Well, wonderful. And so uh, as far as people like trying to go from zero to hero with this, right, learning some sales skills, I imagine that there is uh, like a, a, an amount of uh, like listening more than speaking at first and then perhaps like developing maybe not like a sales script, but like kind of like knowing common objections, knowing what you'll say, knowing like the process to move people along. And so like, what's the method to the madness here? If someone says, okay, like some of the ideas you've said so far make a lot of sense, like, like listening and talking to people, but as far as like a repeatable process or scaling or like making a science out of this, what do we need to know about sales? Yeah, it is a science. Um, people are very predictable. Uh, how people respond to how you treat them is very predictable. So that includes the words you sell, you know, hi, Robert, how are you? If you, answered your, if you answered your phone and I said that immediately goes through your mind, like, Oh crap, who is this? Right? Yeah. So that's predictable. Yet people don't script out good openings. They don't script out good closings. And so then they just wing it. They're, they're smiling and dialing. They're hungover. You know, they just oh, I begrudgingly get after it. Uh, and the reality is the more you schedule this out, the more you script it, uh, the more you stack the odds in your favor. Uh, and, and you've got to do this over and over again because how you answer the phone dictates to me how I open the conversation. Okay, if you answer the phone, you know, Robert Plank, or you're, hi, this is Robert. This is Robert. I hope you're having a great day. How can I help? You know, or you answer it, you know, accounting. You answer it, hey, I got a large Whopper. Yeah, supersize it. Yeah, give me a shake too. Hey, shut up, kids. Damn it. I'm trying to order. Yeah, wh uh, what's going on, man? Who's this? Um, it, but people do that. You know, you're sure. running through the airport. You they still answer your phone. So I have to adjust how I kick off things. By assuming, taking an educated guess on the kind of frame of mind you're in and the personality that you are exhibiting to stack the odds in my favor. Okay, so there are scripts for that. You know, and I tell people, you know, look at how much money Tom Cruise makes. And what does that guy do for a living? He reads the script. Yeah, reads scripts. He reads the script. Okay, yeah. and so people want to wing it, whatever, and like, well, fine, you're, you're winging your paycheck. OK, a professional, you know, a, a rookie practices until they get it right. A professional practices until they can't get it wrong. You know, and I always tell this story. I mean, years ago, uh, about 10 years ago, the, the lead singer for Chicago, a guy, his name was Jason Sheff. He replaced Peter Cetera in the 80s. He came to a conference and he bought one of my books and he signed it. And we stayed in touch. He came on my podcast and he came to play in my hometown here. And he he gave me tickets and backstage passes. And, you know, when I saw them, you know, the original founding members of the band were in their 70s. They've been singing Saturday in the Park for 40 or 50 years. Okay. They were old. They've done it a long time. It would be understandable if they just got up there swigging some whiskey. Saturday in the Park, I guess it was the 4th of July. Okay, they're old. But they didn't. They were perfect. They sounded just like the album. OK, because they were professionals, despite doing this 10 or 20 or 30,000 times. They brought their A game. Because that's what pays the bills. OK, so a professional in sales, even though they've done this, I love me, you know, make 100 calls a day, make 200 calls a day. Bring your A game or, or change the game. You know, if, if you can't bring the heat every single time, the end is near. And so but that's what works. Right. I mean, my, my brother-in-law, he's in construction, you know, yeah, he'll, he's doing different things each day, but within construction, framing, you know, supervising plumbing, supervising electrical. I mean, he's done this every day for 40 years. You know, he's still good at it. He brings his A game. So I'm sorry, you know, entrepreneurial type salesperson, you want to succeed? 
do something so much that you can get bored with it and still be great. Because when you're bored, when you're not constantly worried, when you're, your mind's racing, you know, when, when you can be calm and present in the moment, almost bored, that's when new ideas will hit you. Okay. People living hand to mouth, they have no time, no energy, no desire, no ability to think of something new. They're just like, I got to find my next meal. When things are so good that you're so calm and just lose, using almost no energy and still beating everybody, that's when these huge breakthroughs come in. So you got to love it enough to get bored with it. That's powerful. Love it enough to get bored with it. And what you're describing here is kind of like building up the muscle, right? Get your Absolutely. reps in and stay strong so that because it's easy to backslide and it's easy to say, oh, because this is so easy and boring and predictable, then I'll kind of do it halfway. Mm -hmm. And then it just seems like that's a downward spiral, right? Because then you just you put in less and less effort and then you wonder, oh, man, if only I kind of kept some of the sustained effort in there despite it being boring then i could have had the, those new ideas and i i could have had some of that smooth sailing and so when you come in to set people straight right clean up the mess maybe the, the sales calls aren't going great uh do you see like a common problem is it what we're talking about like lack of energy is it not good opening is it just bad training like what's the the current crisis when it comes to sales it's, it's everything because everything is truly connected. Um, and they'll have the wrong technology or too much technology. They'll have the right technology. It won't be set up correctly. So they're, they're beating up the salespeople with, with doing data entry. Uh, they have no sales training for their people. They think they do, but most salespeople have never been trained. They've had product training. You know, hey, Robert, let me show you these glasses. They're uh, plastic and scratch resistant and, and anti-reflection um, and they're bendable and blah, 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 and go sell them. Who, who buys this and why? Okay, so they get product training from the operations department, uh, for the marketing department. But it's not sales training. They're not given any real scripts. They're not given any activities to do. Okay. I always say you must manage activity and pay on results. Most people show up. Hey, Robert, welcome aboard. Uh, you got a $1.2 million quota. That's $100,000 a month. There's your computer. There's your CRM login. Go get them, Tiger. What do I do? Right. Whereas in the real world, you should be given daily activities and that should be discussed when you're interviewed. You know, here's the deal, Robert, you know, you're going to make 50 outbound dials a day. You're expected to do those 50 outbound dials within two hours. Uh, then you're going to, you're expected to make 30 follow-up calls to existing prospects. You're expected to send 50 emails. You're expected to connect with 20 new contacts on LinkedIn. You're expected to have ongoing dialogue with 20 others on LinkedIn. You're expected to send 10 handwritten letters per day uh, to your top customers. Okay. And if you do this, you should have two demos a day. You should close one deal every two days. You should be on, you should close two to three deals every single week. And if you do that, you will blow out your number. Now I can manage you daily and weekly. Most people screw up these quarterly and annual goals. They're too far out. They need to manage daily and weekly. If you're hitting 85% of proven activity numbers in a week, you, you're fine. You, cause you know, 15, 15% here and there, you can kind of recover that gap. Uh, but as long as you're at least at 85% of that number, you can, you're going to hit your numbers. Okay. Stay, but, but they, they never do that. They never do that. And then the sales managers that are, that are chosen are usually pulled from, top performing salespeople, they have no sales management training. They were lucky, right time, right place. Maybe they inherited good territory. Maybe they were just good, right? But, and, but they were aggressive. They were competitive. They were lone wolves. You know, they may have even burned some bridges and now they're the manager. They're not ready to manage and they're not really ready to be followed. So, I mean, it's just, I see that every single time, right? And then marketing is weak. 
They don't want to offend anybody. Everybody's politically correct. So this messaging is just blah. Choose us because we care. Owned and operated. Family owned and operated. You know, whatever. 12 patents. We started in a garage just like Steve Jobs. That's not a compelling reason for me to buy from you. So well, like so it talks everything. about you and not about me that way. Well, it does, right? But I always tell people, if I can take your logo, or your slogan and put it on my logo and vice versa, and it makes sense, it's not a good slogan. You know, grow your sales with great sales training. I don't know. It's probably a thousand or 10,000 sales trainers in the U.S. alone that can use that logo, that slogan. So come up with something compelling. Because the, the the dirty little secret of marketing is that it it's like it's like a magnet, you know. Dan Kennedy talks about magnetic marketing, but a magnet repels as much as it attracts. Nobody's willing to repel anyone, so the messaging the just becomes blah. If it's blah, it's not only is it is it forgettable; it's just not even memorable. I didn't forget you. I never even knew you because mm -hmm. it's just so blah. So, you know, you throw that in the whole mix. It's just, it's rough, you know, and then you get companies start taking in private equity. Now they're owned by somebody else and they're pushed around. And, and it just, it, I'm honestly surprised that most companies even have their lights on. When I, when I'm, I'm brought in and look under the hood, I'm like, holy cow, this is rough, you know? So, I, I feel you, you know, those that are going through this. I worked at a lot of startups. I was in tech for a decade, lots of layoffs, reorganizations. I get it. You know, and you think the people on high know what they're doing and most of them do not. Uh, it is scary. <laughs> so learn how to sell because you know, if you know how to sell, you'll always land on your feet. Right. Because that it's a very transferable skill, right? Picking up some of these skills. And it seems like also, recognizing when the environment is bad, right? You mentioned some of these things like the, the Peter principle, that salesman became the manager, but then what he did is not replicatable. You mentioned how there's not really much of a organized system of saying like, well, here, here's the inputs and the outputs, right? Here's the activity. And I love how you listed some of that off, like the kind of the different tiers of, of prospects, right? You're like, here's the people to follow up with, handwritten notes, this number of LinkedIn. That's really cool to think about where, and, and how you mentioned that's like proven numbers, right? You say, well, yeah. we did all this stuff and we said, okay, you, you, you do this work and here's what's expected to come out. So that way, you know what to expect, you know if things are wrong or if they're off, and that way you don't have to deal with any kind of like weeks or months of lag time, right? You just say on, on a daily basis, like, are you doing these activities? So there's so much to uh, packed in there and so much to think about. But as far as you know, you've got the, the books and you've got the podcast, and you've got all these decades of adventures in your own journey and your own like personal transformation. Is there anything about your career or about selling that's really like surprised you? It's really woken you up, made you change your way of thinking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of alluded to it. It's like you, you, you look around and you think these senior people uh, have their act together and like they know something you don't know. <laughs> and it's, it's surprising how much they don't. Um, they, everybody is where they are for the first time, you know? So we're all kind of winging it in a way, right? <laughs> that may be the first time your boss is a CEO or a president or a sales manager. It's the first time maybe that, uh, they they're leading during a down quarter the first time they're leading when they've blown up their numbers. So, I mean, invest in yourself. Okay. Your company is rarely going to invest in you the way you want and need. Uh, they're rarely going to give you enough leads to hit your own number. As soon as you uh, succeed, they're going to raise your number. Okay. And so it, it just is how it is. So, uh, and, and look, there's pros and cons to everything. You may think, oh, this is terrible. Everybody's an idiot. They're out to get me. I'm gonna go do my own thing. Dude, it's, it's not any easier doing it on your own. Okay. So don't let people convince you one way or another, what's best for you, you know, figure out what, how to make things work. And, and even if, 
you make up your mind you're in a bad spot, sell your way either out of the situation or into a better one. Okay, because you the markets always change. And so if you double down, say okay, I'm lead. I'm you know, next quarter I'm out. Here. I'm gonna finish out the year, get hit hit my bonuses, I'm out of here. Okay. So you got three months, you knock it out of the park. All of a sudden you're getting accolades. Upper management is picking your brain. They're asking you for some input. Now you have a little more status in the company, maybe even get a little bump in pay. All of a sudden you might you might like where you are. You know, so uh, do all you can where you are, even if you think you're going to leave. Uh, and you're, it's always a better, a better situation. You know, like I, I quit it to sports. You know, you see an athlete wants to get traded. It doesn't help them to sandbag and have a terrible year. You know, go out there, blow some things up, set some records, you know, get traded at a premium. Um, and besides that's when you get hurt, right? When you're kind of lollygagging around, you know, like in football, you rarely get hurt going full speed ahead and hitting each other in the face. It's that tweak, you know, from the side or something and the, the freak accident. So just, just go all in whatever it is you're doing. Well, I love the optimism and the empathy here and this idea of just like, you know, go all in and leave it out on the field. And that that, all, that applies so much in, in sports and in all, all these other situations where it's like if you decide that you will self-sabotage and you'll just only do things halfway on your way out, then that's guaranteed failure, which is it's fine, it's safe, it's comfortable. But what about taking a risk or what about uh, like giving it your all? And, you know, I'm a I'm a former computer programmer here at West, and there's a thing called eating your own dog food, where if there's like a yes. brand of dog food, if you had to eat it. You'd make it like, you know, dress it up, make it nice, make it edible. And so maybe then you'd just be like, hey, now I'm fine eating this dog food. Or if you moved on to something else, then you'd be like, well, it, either way, there's there's more choices, possibilities for me. And I just I love hearing about the numbers, right? How you're mentioning yeah. some of these things about like hundreds of contacts and multiple hours per day. And it just seems like a lot of this is so much of a, a mental game, right, of of knowing the, the ways that you trip yourself up and having these expectations and knowing about the, the amount of efficiency and work that's required of you. And so you've given us a lot to chew on so far, right? A lot to think about. But a podcast is limited in time, as you know, having uh, uh, being a host of two podcasts. So if someone says, man, I've got so many cool ideas already from Mr. West, but I need some next steps. I need some structure. How does someone take the next step with you? How do they find out about these books, podcasts, <laughs> website, your training, et cetera? Super easy. Just go to fixerwest.com. Um, everything's there. And uh link to my calendar. I offer a free call. Um, you get a link straight to my, my meetings uh, calendar. And uh, I'll walk you through uh, the different tools I have, see what your goals are, and we'll figure out if it's a fit or you know, I can refer you. I got a, a very good Rolodex after all these years. So uh, you know, I'm happy to help folks find the right solution for them. Very nice. So that is fixerwest.com. And I just love how sales guys like you take this. It is kind of a repetitive, boring thing to do, right? You update the CRM, you make the phone calls. But when it's gamified in this way with the flashcards and the metrics and the keywords and the meetings and the role playing, you take this kind of dull subject and you make it really exciting, almost like a sport where you're like, hey, I've, I've got to hit my targets. And so F I X E R W E S dot com is that place where you can find those uh, podcasts. There's the sales podcast, CRM sushi podcast, copywriting for sales. There's flashcards. There's a page where Wes recommends CRMs for you, whatever is appropriate. You can find out about his speaking and so much more. And so if you are excited, energized by some of these things that Wes has mentioned to you, go to fixerwest.com. Click around, schedule a call, get the starter pack, do what makes sense for you to up your game as far as sales go. 
if you've been kind of let down or disappointed, dissatisfied, well, you're the only one that can change it. And if that means changing your technique or getting better trained or changing your employment career, whatever, well, the change starts with you. And that starts by going to fixerwest.com. And you know, Wes, I love the randomness. I love the us, us being all over the place. But when you get to near the end of a podcast episode, you kind of have to wrap it up, tie it all together, right? And so as people are going to fixerwest.com, it's time to put you on the spot slightly and stump you perhaps by asking about a fun quarter lesson that has served you in all of your adventures and journeys that perhaps can help us. So what comes to mind for you as far as a fun quarter lesson? Uh, one of my old sales bosses, he, he was fond of saying, you know, sales is the straw that stirs the drink. Um, and he taught me about scotch. So uh, it's, it's good that it's um, <laughs> related to drinking, but, uh, but it's true. You know, nothing happens until a sale is made. Uh, so embrace the profession, you know, understand, like I said, it, it, to sell is to serve. Uh, if you embrace it and approach it with that attitude, uh, the sky really is the limit. And I love that attitude to sell is to serve and sales is the straw that stirs the drink. So get to stirring, right? Mix things sure. up. Right, and go right. to fixerwest.com and, and fix that drink and get your sales training. And we'll <laughs> see you there. And thank you very much, Wes, for stopping by, giving us some cool lessons, cool stories. I really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks, Robert.